Welcome to the Mind Grow Radio Storyteller Series Podcast. I am your host, Stephanie Kaffin, and today I am so excited because we are joined by branding expert Wendy Barr to talk about embracing change in your business without losing your mind. And anybody who has ever had a business of any kind, even if it's a side gig, you know there's changes and you know it can be super frustrating. And it really helps when you have a branding expert to help you out with information. And I'm so excited. Wendy has worked with some of the world's leading brands, such as MTV Network, Nickelodeon, RCA Records, Bad Boy Entertainment, Allura Magazine, Rockefeller Center, P. Diddy, and more. And it's an honor to have her with us today. Please help me welcome the most fabulous Wendy Barr. Thank you. Hi, when Stephanie. You are so amazing. And you have built this amazing business. You've worked with some of the biggest brands in the world, networking with the best of the best. What would you say has been your biggest challenge when it comes to facing change in your business? Well, Stephanie, I can tell you that I have faced a lot of change in my business. I um, I had a business for 12 years when 9-11 happened. And then um, I was seven years in when the pandemic hit. So you learn to bob and weave for sure. Yeah, there's magic in that pivot, right? If you can pivot gracefully, you kind of one half the bottom the battle and i found for myself like sometimes it's embracing that pivot that is challenging when you're like the sure. uncertainty or unknown you know stepping into that unknown well yeah and then um having a branding agency when ai um generative ai became you know, um, accessible for the for just regular consumers or anybody. Open AI. Um, myself. Oh, great. Fine. Here we go again. Branding as we know it. They don't need me anymore. That's it. So, um, you know, I started to kind of back off and say, okay, well, what do I want to do? All right, maybe I'll work at the library or. You know, you know, work in my garden. I, I, I don't see any hope for this business. And then I started playing around with AI, and I realized something important, and that was that the content that I saw a lot of my fellow business owners generating felt really canned and very bland and boring, and not in their voice. And um, I realized that you have to teach. AI, no matter what tool you're using, whether it's chat GPT or whatever it is, you have to teach your AI assistant to be able to speak in your brand voice. And you can't do that if you don't know your brand voice. So, so, so for those who may not be totally familiar with what AI is, do you want to go into that a little bit? Well, sure. AI is artificial intelligence, and um, and although that might sound a little scary to you, it's really not. It is um, it's technology that pulls information from the internet to answer questions that you might ask it. Uh, you can ask it anything from um, "Help me write a recipe for cornbread" to um, write five social media posts for my business. So, um, but what you have to remember is that it's doing just that. It's pulling information from the internet. It's a language tool. So it's going to go out onto the internet, find the language that it thinks you want, and then it's going to prepare accordingly. So unless you actually teach your AI assistant you know, what your voice should sound like and some of the um, subtle nuances of who you are going to get 
skinned and bland responses. Now you might not care if you're just right, if you just need a recipe for cornbread, but if you're using artificial intelligence um, or, um, you know, machine learning uh, to, to market your business, you're going to need to make sure that it's actually speaking volume to who you are as a brand and therefore speaking to other humans. One of the things that I really love about you, Wendy, is that you're like on the cutting edge of everything, the new things, the new ways to help your clients, the new ways to grow your business. You, you're on it. I mean, you built, in 2016, you pulled together a team of mind-blowing creatives, branding experts, business strategists, and you're all completely obsessed with helping entrepreneurs build their business from the brand up. And I love that you're now teaching and showing entrepreneurs like me how to use this new tool that not a lot of people really understand and use it in a way for good that is going to grow your business and help you get through those changes that we see in the world. I mean, changes, like there's changes that just since COVID staffing problems, all sorts of challenges that companies face. And I love the way that you bring information to people to help them, no matter what the change is, you can grow through it from the, from the brand up. I love that. Aww. It's fun to say that. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. I've always really been an early adapter. That's for sure. And, um, you know, when I started this business, um, so I was a college professor for the Art Institute for a dozen years. And um, when I, then I got laid off. And I don't know, for, for your listeners, if you've ever been laid off, it's not your fault. You didn't do anything. It has to do with um, upper management and corporate decisions that have nothing to do with your um, performance. However, feels like a slap in the face. And so when that happened, I thought, because I thought I was going to be a college professor into retirement. It was so much fun. And I loved teaching and I loved my students. And then when I got laid off, I was really feeling quite lost. And um, so when I decided to start my branding agency, I basically recruited my cream of the crop students, the ones that really impressed me, the ones that had gone on to graduate and become professional designers. And that's really how I started the company. Um, and I'll be honest with you, Stephanie, I get bored easy. So I think that's why I'm an early adapter. I'm always interested in what's new and exciting. And, you know, even when I was an online a, a college professor for the Art Institute, I was the online college professor when online education was brand new. So, but, you know, I, I like to be um, intellectually stimulated. You were Zooming before Zooming was a thing. <laughs> we really were. We used, um, Zoom hadn't even been created yet. I, it was used, I don't even know if Zoom was used, but we used other kinds of um, conferencing, et cetera. But yeah, it, um, it's all very interesting to me. And I, I have to say this, and um, I know this probably may, this might be too personal for your listeners, but somehow no, knowing you, the, knowing you, I doubt that. But um, I, I was married at the time, um, and not to my current husband because my current husband is a, like my absolute soulmate and a dreamboat. But um, my ex-husband was brilliant and intelligent and like beyond his years for sure and when i took the job as an online college professor i had a i wasn't super techie at the time and i i kept going into his office and asking him questions like you know well how do you do this or how do you do that and you know what he said to me and it was the best thing he could have said to me but it really pissed me off in the at the time he said wendy i don't i can't 
I can't do everything for you. Google it. And I was like, Google it? Here, okay, well, so I became very self-sufficient when it came to technology at that moment. I love that. It was kind of a lead-in to my next question. You kind of answered it already, which was, what made you decide to take that leap into being an entrepreneur and you, so it was the layoff, right? That got you to decide to do this? No, because I was all, I didn't, I like to joke around and say, I've been an entrepreneur since birth. I like, I came out of the womb as an entrepreneur and my mom, I heard that I'm from kind of here. Yeah. 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 My mom was an entrepreneur and my grandpa was an entrepreneur and I've always had my own business except for maybe two little stints and one of them was when I was at the Art Institute. So the company that I had that I worked with, MTV and RCA Records and P. Diddy, et cetera, um, that came before teaching at the Art Institute. But then um, 9-11 happened. The majority of my clients were in New York City. So... I, yeah, they, they weren't thinking about marketing, branding, or promotions. They, they were trying to rebuild the city and everybody um, was trying to find themselves. So I re you know, and I was losing money every day and I, I had to stop the bleeding. And so I just, I closed my company and that's when I became a college professor at the Art Institute. And then after the in, the art institutes, when I was laid off, I thought, God, do I still have the bandwidth to own another business? I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm older now. You know, can I even keep up with technology at this point? And um, I really didn't feel like I had a choice. I, I must have put out a hundred applications to find another teaching job, a hundred. And I got one interview. And the 12 year old that interviewed me said she didn't think I was a good fit. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's, um, when your back is against the wall, it's amazing what you find of yourself. I'm fascinated because through all of that, um, rejection, I mean, it must've felt kind of like that. And all of that stuff of doing a hundred applications, like how did you not get so discouraged? Like how did you not give up? Oh, I was discouraged, but you know, we're grown ups and we have to make money. And you know, my, my husband just never been that girl to just sit back and be taken care of. And, it wasn't his responsibility to take care of me. So I needed to figure out a way to take care of myself. And I, you know, I, I've really not never, be, I've never really been that person that, that sits around and has a pity party. I've always been a more of a creative thinker, like, all right, all right, now, you know, let's cry, feel sorry for ourselves and get over it. You know, if you don't like, if you don't like what you see when you look to the right, well, look to the left. I love it. I love it so much. And it's very empowering uh, when you when you take control of your own, when you take responsibility, right? That's really what it is, is taking responsibility for your own success. You're just like, I'm not waiting for you to do this for me. I'm finding my own success. Bye. <laughs> I love it. Well, you have to. And you know, I have a master's degree and not like everybody needs to have a master's degree in order to, you know, be considered an expert. But, you know, I had an, I had dozens of years of experience under my belt and, you know, I just wasn't ready to quit yet. And now you are the CEO of a women led, women operated company that makes such an impact in the world for entrepreneurs and businesses. And now you're actually in the process of rebranding again and doing changes again, bringing in this new technology to expand your business, grow your business and that of your clients. 
So how yeah. were you able to um, do that change? Like it sounds, because I know you, I kind of was there for the process of it. You like decided, you decided you wanted to teach this, you decided you wanted to bring it forth and then you took action and started doing that. Do you have a process or do you have something that you use for your own personal growth um, tool that made it so that you could manage that without losing your ever love and freaking mind because sometimes pain feels so big and especially when you're rebranding a company and lots of companies have done it you're doing it we evolve right but a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck in that i have to stay the same mindset how right. are you able to shift out of that well i don't think you were ever well, <laughs> well and the, 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 yeah, and I am. I have to say that I am very good at embracing change. Now, um, I and I love change, so that's probably been my saving grace throughout my life. Through throughout all of these businesses and jobs, and is that oh, okay. After I got done, after I dusted myself off and wiped my tears, I said, okay, what's next? And, um, yeah, we just rebranded to Intelligent Brands. And um, I'm very impulsive, so maybe I could have given it a little teeny bit more thought. <laughs> because the problems and challenges along the way when you rebrand are um, typically uh, challenges you don't think of when you're in the moment. Right. And... Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm even, I'm having difficulty even getting the trademark. So, um, so, you know, if you're going to rebrand, make sure if you want a trademark, make sure you can get that and it's available before you tell the world like I did. Um, and then, um, and, and that's okay too. I, I mean, I'm not that worried about it because, um, there, the person who has the trademark doesn't really do what I do. And that's the key when you're trademarking is trying to find, yeah, there, there can't be a lot of overlap if somebody already has that name. So, and I don't, I don't think that'll be a problem, but, um, but it doesn't matter really to me <laughs> because then I'll just change it to something else because what really matters to me are the lives that I impact and the business owners that I help. And the knowledge that I share, that's really all that matters to me. And so I started the Impactors Global Mastermind for that reason. And that's my focus right now is really helping the people that are inside the mastermind to build and grow and scale their business using um, AI tools and brand savvy and marketing strategies that other businesses might not be thinking about right now. Yes. And masterminding is so powerful for anybody listening. Maybe you've heard of masterminding. Maybe you've participated. Maybe you actually have your own mastermind group. If that's the case, you already know how powerful the process of masterminding is. And from experience, I have had the opportunity to be in a mastermind group with Wendy for the last 12 months, and it's been amazing. So I know that whatever you're bringing to this global mastermind that you're doing is going to be off the freaking chart. I cannot wait to even learn more about it. This is the first time I was hearing of it, and all of my senses went, whoop, she's doing what? What? That's going to scare me into that. Oh, my God. The fact that you just said that this is the first you've been hearing about it and you follow me on social media means I need to talk about it more. So thank you for um, the, the heads up because I um, I did send multiple emails to my list letting them know that I was doing this. Um, I, you know, I'm careful not to be like a salesy weirdo out there on social me media, Aaron. Um, but thank you for for making that known to me because yeah, I probably do need to get out there and let people know 
um, that we're doing this. And and if any of your listeners are interested, I, that's actually like on my whole page on my website, which is intelligentbrands.ai. So if you go to intelligentbrands.ai and scroll down on the homepage, you'll see um, the Impactors Global Mastermind. There's an application there. And then if you go all the way to the bottom, there's another button that says um, Brand Consult. So if you're just, and it's complimentary. So if you're just wondering if you if you're on brand or if it's time for you to pivot or maybe you need to think about some new language, I'm happy to chat with anybody, including you, Stephanie. We need to talk more. I love that idea. No, I'm going to be booking that call, right? <laughs> but sure, for sure, because you're one of my favorite humans and you, um, you have this energy that is just brilliant. I love being around you. I loved getting to meet you in person out in California. I love just tuning into your enthusiasm. And what I really, really love is your realness. Like I can count on you being direct and real. And there's not a lot of, you know, fluff or BS. You're going to give me the direct nuggets and tell me why. And you, you don't beat around the bush when it comes to delivery. And I really, really applaud you for that because that is so rare just out there in the in the internet marketplace that we know as social media. Um, and it's so appreciated. And I well, love that about you. I feel the same way about you. And I loved meeting you. And didn't we have so much fun giggling oh my together? God. So, yeah. So much fun. We, so much fun. Yeah. And then obviously, why not for my are so much fun and so powerful because the the relationships that get established, they're not just like they don't just last for however long the program lasts. You know, that is so ahead. true. I right. think most of my, yeah, most of my business besties have come from different communities that I've been involved in, but, um, you know, I did get, I did receive an email from somebody just um, yesterday that said, can you tell me more about your mastermind? Because all masterminds are not created equal. And I thought that was brilliant because it's, it's really very true. And, um, and a true mastermind taps into the brilliance in the group where we can connect and solve each other's problems collaboratively instead of just one person um being the you know the problem solver or the information um deliverer or so and i really tried to create that with the impactor global mastermind um so like we meet three times a month and like on the first week that we meet we 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 do the true mastermind i created something called the seven minute impact method where the first seven people get seven minutes to collaborate with the great minds in the group. Oh, that's so and, good. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And then the second meeting of the month, um, we have a training. Most of the time I'll do it, but if there's somebody in the group that has something new and exciting that they want to teach, then I empower the members that are in the group to, um, to share. And then the third, um, our third meeting, we just um, implement because, I, I mean, business owners, we just don't have time to get get it all done. And so we would just sit there for 90 minutes, all of us, and um, you state what you're going to complete, and then you work on it, and then you let us know at the end how far you got. That kind of support is really priceless when you think about getting stuff done because you know, there are times that the inner procrastinator comes out and just doesn't want to show up for that or you can I could put it off till later. I don't have to do that right now. But when you have someone who's actually there with you, they're also doing stuff, they're holding you accountable and they're supporting you and it's holding space for you to get your tasks done. It's such a powerful process. Uh, yeah, I think so too. That it's really amazing. What would your best advice be to somebody who was just starting out? 
Well, if you're just starting out, first I'm going to ask you this, and that is, you know, um, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> because owning your own business is challenging. It's so much more than just doing that stuff you love. There's stuff that you have to do that you might not love. For example, you might be a, um, a shy introvert and you might not realize that you actually have to, you, you can't be your, bre your um, industry's best kept secret or you won't make money. And if you're going to have a business, you have to make money. And if, you know, yes, you want to go out there and make an impact and change lives and do great work, but you, but you still have to make money if it's an actual business. And so number one, ask yourself how hard you're willing to work. And if you're willing to step out of your comfort zone. And then the next thing I would say is to connect with your inner unicorn. Go inside of you and figure out what's unique about you. What are your unique dif like what's your you what are your unique differentiation um aspects? And then yeah, get in touch with that inner unicorn. That's really great advice because you've got to get clear on what you really want. And anything and what makes you different. Anything is possible, you just gotta get clear. So you can yes. really decide. That's what I'm hearing. Yep. That's really good. Wendy, where can people go? Um, is there another place other than Intelligent Brands? That's your website, intelligentbrands.ai. But where else can I go to learn more about you and tune into your wisdom? Well, um, if you, we have a YouTube channel, so Intelligent Brands, um, had the YouTube channel, so you can find us on YouTube and some um, videos that I've created on, on YouTube. And then, um, you know, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, wherever, um, wherever you, you know, your, wherever your playground is, wherever you enjoy social media, we're there. And, um, and then you can find me at I am Wendy Barr. And I love to speak on stages. Um, I love to speak at virtual events. I mean, whatever, just, uh, reach out to me and do right. Yeah. I'm in e-women and then I have my own, um, women's group as well on Facebook called the women's business link. And so, um, we have, you know, almost 1500 ladies in there. We have a monthly networking event that's completely free. So the Facebook group is is free and then the networking group is free and i mean my goal is to really just empower business owners definitely empower women to step into the spotlight and be their brand i love that oh my gosh i can't believe our half hour is over time flies when i hang out with you thank you you that's Wendy Barr for joining us here today. Thank you, listeners, for spending this time with us. Please go tune into Wendy wherever you can. You can thank me later. She is amazing. You'll be so glad you did. Thank you for tuning in here with us on the Mind Grow Radio Storyteller Series podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Kaplan. We've been joined by the ever-fabulous Wendy Barr. And until we meet again, keep shining in your brilliance. Bye, everybody. Bye.